Hi kids, I'm Miss Natalia, or Natalia, and I'm a wildlife biologist with the Orange County Water District. I don't know if you guys know what a biologist is, but it's someone, a scientist, that studies life. And I'm, I study wildlife and wildlife that live around us. And I'm here at Prado Wetlands in Corona. Right behind me, you could see it right there with the forest. So a group of biologists in the water district, we work out here and we work with a variety of animals. And today I'm gonna to share with you some snakes that we work with, but that live in our work office. Um, so they're pet snakes and they're harmless, um, but I'm gonna be able to share with you how cool they are, and also we have some special guests, Cameron, another wildlife biologist with the Water District, and his kids, Gavin and Evie, are gonna be here to show you how cool these snakes are. So the snakes I'm gonna share with you today are harmless and they're friendly. They are non-venomous. A lot of people are scared of snakes because they think, oh my gosh, they have poison. Well, poison is something different. Poison is actually something that you have to ingest. So if you heard like a poison plant or poison potion or something like that, snakes are not poisonous. Some snakes are venomous and a venom is a chemical that these animals produce in their body to hunt and eat their prey. So venomous snakes, they are, they're dangerous and you want to keep away from it, but the snakes that I'm going to show you today are non-venomous. Um, some snakes that we have in the wild in Southern California and this area that are venomous are called rattlesnakes. That term you might have heard of before. So rattlesnakes you might have seen when you've gone hiking or in the wilderness or something. Um, but they are the ones that you do want to keep a distance with. Any animal you see in the wild, you don't want to go up to them or touch them. You want to keep your distance because you don't know if they could be harmful and then you might be harming them too. So with rattlesnakes, if you do see a rattlesnake while you're hiking or out somewhere at a park or something like that, you know they're a rattlesnake and they're venomous because they have a diamond shaped head, a thick body, and they have a rattle at their end of their tail. Kind of looks like a baby rattle. So that rattle they use to warn off predators. So if you're hiking or walking and you hear a rattle, that's them either in the bushes or somewhere on the trail nearby and they're warning you to back off. And that's exactly what you want to do. You don't want to go near them. You want to back off and walk the other way. They're ones, the animals that you do not want to interact with. So when you're out in the wild, you want to just observe wildlife from a distance. But if you're with a professional biologist or like a zookeeper at the zoo, or even if you know someone with a pet snake and you have the opportunity to touch a snake, of course that's safe, it is an extraordinary experience. So today we want to show you how cool these snakes that we have are. Again, they're harmless, non-venomous snakes that we have here in the office. Um, so let's show you. So this is Cornelius, our corn snake. I'm going to give it to here to Cameron. He's a wildlife biologist here at the Orange County Water District and his kids, Gavin and Evie. So the best way to hold the snake is to support him on both sides of the body. So yeah, right underneath the head and also at the base too. Good job, Gavin. So have you guys seen a live snake before? Yeah, that's most cool. You guys are so lucky. How does he feel, Gavin? Yeah? Scaly. Scaly, yeah. And snakes do have scales. Do you know what happens when the snakes are growing? What happens to their scales? They're big. Exactly. So snakes, as they're growing older and they get bigger, their, their snake skin doesn't. And so what they have to do is shed that skin in order for them to grow bigger. Cornelius, he sheds about every month or couple months or so. <laughs> Evie, would you like to pet him? I can feel Cornelius. Good job, Evie. Is he slimy or not slimy? I'm hungry. You want to hold him next? Good deal. Right. So why do you guys think Cornelius is called a corn snake. Wow, that's exactly right, Gavin. Corn snakes, so they're not normally from this area in Southern California. They're found in Eastern United States. And it's exactly what Gavin said. 
Corn snakes are normally found in farm fields, particularly corn fields. And corn snakes, they're really friendly snakes and they're commonly found in the pet trade, so a lot of people have them as pets. Oh, look what he's doing. He's crawling up into your hood. Cornelius loves doing that. He loves getting into hair, on your shoulders, around your neck. <laughs> Do you like Cornelius? He's really friendly, huh? What is he doing, Gavin? Yeah? What do you think? Why do you think he sticks his tongue at you? Do you think na 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 na? Do you think he's doing that? <laughs> why? Why do you think he's sticking his tongue at you? Exactly. To smell? Yeah. Yeah, he's smelling for food. Exactly. So when a snake sticks out their sticks out their tongue, it's not that they're trying to taste you. They actually use their tongue to smell. Do you think snakes have noses? Yep, they do, but they don't use their noses to smell. Exactly. So the way that they do it is through their tongue. They don't have the same type of nose that we do. But how did he get to us? Well, corn snakes are normally found in the pet industry. And he was donated from us. Someone, a worker from Orange County Water District, one of their neighbors found him on the streets. Now, wouldn't it be so cool to see a snake on the street? What would you do if it was slithering down your street? Well, first of all, it would kind of be really weird if a snake was slithering down your street because a snake wouldn't normally be on concrete. Where do you think they would be at? They would be near vegetation, bushes, rocks, because they want some place to hide. So when the person found them, and they found them on a street in Fountain Valley in Orange County, they knew that something was odd. And this snake is very vibrant looking. We don't normally have corn snakes here. So they knew it must have been someone's pet and needed a home. So that's how we got them. They donated to him, to us, and he stays now in our office with us. So this snake is a rosy boa and his name is Willie and he was found in the wild and this snake is very very good at um, doing stuff like what he's doing right now. So Gavin just shared with you Willie, our rosy boa, and he covered all the basics on what you need to know. Again, the rosy boa, this is a desert rosy boa, and they are native to Southern California and the Prado wetland area. You wouldn't normally see them by the water. They would be more in like rocky areas, um, but they are found in Southern California. A lot of times, uh, rosy boas would be collected because they're so friendly and docile. And so certain areas in Southern California, they are extirpated, meaning they're locally extinct. So that's unfortunate for this species. They're so friendly that people think it's okay to pick them up and take them home. But if you see one in the wild, it's best to just leave them alone and let them be. So this is Javier. He's a Mexican mountain king snake. And king snakes are normally found in like New Mexico and in Mexico area, Arizona, kind of more like mountainous areas too. And what's really cool about king snakes is we also have a California king snake that's in this area is the California king snake doesn't have the red and a Mexican mountain king snake does have this red coloring. A lot of people get confused with the Mexican mountain king snake and get it confused with uh, a similar snake called the Arizona coral snake. And a coral snake is venomous, um, but 
Again, Mexican mountain king snakes, they are friendly, they are harmless uh, and non-venomous too. And if you were to see one of these color patterns in the wild and you're like confused between a coral snake or a Mexican mountain king snake, they do have a different coloration. So the coral snake will have the yellow and the red touching and the Mexican mountain king snake have these red and black bands touching. So a little saying is, red touches yellow kill a fellow red touches black is a friend of jack so this coloration you can see is red touches black and that shows you that this is a friendly friend of jack javier a mexican mountain king snake another really cool thing about king snakes in general from mexican mountain king snakes and the california king snakes that we see in the area is that king snakes are immune to rattlesnake venom so they actually can eat a rattlesnake. And that is why they also are called king snakes. So do you guys think that a snake is warm-blooded like us or cold-blooded? So a snake is actually cold-blooded and they're cold-blooded meaning that their body temperature depends on their environment. So if it's cold outside, the snake's body is gonna be cold as well. And so that's why you'll see that a snake will come out when it's warm and sunny, and they're gonna come out onto the trail or onto a rock to sunbathe. And when it's cold, they're gonna hide in the crevice of some rocks or underneath vegetation. Unlike us, we're mammals, we're warm-blooded. So inside, our internal body temperature is constant. No matter if it's snowing or it's summer hot day, our body's always the same. But for a snake, it matters how the environment is. So what do you think snakes eat? So in the wild, snakes will eat rodents, like small mice, um, even like small rats. They could also eat lizards, even other snakes, like this king snake that could eat rattlesnakes and sometimes even birds or eggs of some other animals. But these pet snakes that we have here in the office, we feed them frozen mice. Do you guys think that snakes are important for the world? They definitely are. Because like I said, how they eat small rodents and those other animals in the wild, they help maintain pest populations. So snakes that are like around in your neighborhood, maybe even in your backyard or in a park nearby, they're eating all those little animals and kind of keeping the ecosystem in balance. If there no were more snakes, or if there weren't any more snakes, you'd see a lot more rats and mice in your area. That wouldn't be a very good thing. <laughs> so they're very important for the world and very important for the ecosystem. Snakes we want to protect. So our pet snakes that we have here at the office are friendly and used to being around a lot of people and kids. We wish you guys were here today, but if you have ever the opportunity, if you know someone with a pet snake, or if you're with the professional again, or a zookeeper or something like that at the zoo, and you're able to touch a snake, you should t take a look and try to feel them and see for yourself too. They're very cool and fascinating animals.